So I've been on YouTube probably like actively for four or five years, taking it seriously, doing this whole audio thing, home theater thing, tech thing. And I've learned a lot specifically about home theater, um, being on YouTube so long, listening to comments, watching a few other reviewers' reviews, meeting other companies and you know collaborating with other companies, doing reviews. I've learned so much about home theater and I want to share what I've learned with you about this hobby. And I'm going to get right into it. First thing that I've learned is that it's everybody's room in home theater is different, yes, but everybody has their own take on home theater and it's okay. A lot of people in the comment section say, well, you should do it this way. You should do this this way. Move this here. And then you have some people who are saying, ah, it's his room. Do what you want. And that is exactly the truth. There is a very fine line between critiquing somebody and helping them out versus bashing them and saying, oh my gosh, that room is terrible. I bet it sounds like this or whatever, or you don't have this. I'm, I'm rocking an 85 inch Sony. You're using a 55 inch TCFO. So what I'm trying to say is that this hobby is just that. It's something you do for the fun of it. Now, some people actually do this as a full-time job. They take it seriously, like Dream Media Home Theater, Youth Man does this full-time, so on and so forth. So people actually take this incredibly seriously, but it all stemmed from this being a hobby. Maybe it's more work for some, but it's still a hobby at the end of the day. And if you don't enjoy it, then it's, there's no reason to have home theater. At the end of the day, the core purpose of home theater is to enjoy movies with either yourself or anybody you want to bring in there. So I've learned all, through my YouTube years that you can't be too critical of yourself or of other people because at the end of the day, they're doing this the way they do it because it's fun to them. And you or I myself can't say anything about that. That is what they want to do. Now, yes, you can help them if, if, if it's invited, if they want your help. But other than that, it's a hobby and people are going to do this hobby the way that it makes most fun for them. Another thing that I've learned about home theater because of YouTube is that doing your research can take you a long way. Um, but not only do you want to do your research, you always want to get a second and third opinion. At the end of the day, YouTube is a giant search engine where you can type in how to do this or what does this mean and somebody has probably made a video on it and most likely multiple people have made a video on it. You don't know everything. So it's really good to ask questions, watch other people's videos or maybe review something that you think you know and maybe you had it backwards or there was more to it that you've never been told. So being a YouTuber means that people are going to pretty much take what you say for face value. And if you're going to talk, you have to know what you're talking about. And there's been times where I thought I knew something and I was wrong. And usually I try to correct it, whether that's in the comments or making another video. It's not often that I don't get things right because if I don't know something, I'll research it first. Um, but whatever I say on YouTube, people are going to trust me, especially if they use what I say and the results are positive or it comes out to be just like how I said it called credibility, right? So being on YouTube has taught me that doing your research will, will definitely get you a better sound. You'll buy better speakers. You'll make smarter purchases. You'll know where to look when it comes to buying gear. You'll know what gear to get. And, uh, you, you can do that through YouTube, do videos. You can do that through forums, whatever. There's online reviews, articles, things like that. So if you're looking for a piece of equipment, a TV, or if you're looking to calibrate your system or calibrate your projector, there's probably somebody smarter than you who's already broke it down into layman's terms so that you can apply it to your own room. So do your research is pretty much what this tip is for. And I do mine as much as I can. I try not to open my mouth unless I know what I'm talking about. And sometimes I get it wrong, but I'm always going to be the first to admit it. So, but you can trust me, hopefully I've been here long enough that I usually say the right things, but a lot of you guys are older than I am and have been around for a while. You guys give me ideas and tips or corrections that I would have never known otherwise. So do your research, listen to people who've been around longer than you, and you can really have yourself a solid home theater if you just take the time to listen. A very obvious, but sometimes 
overlooked thing that YouTube has taught me about home theater is that everybody is in a different stage in their life. Now, we did talk about the first thing where people use this hobby differently, and it kind of piggybacks on this, but people are, are, are in different walks of life. For me, I got into home theater because I love music. And I was a music major in college. I loved music in high school. I've been in the choir since I was super young. My family, my extended family, they can sing, so on and so forth. So I love music. I love making music, writing music, whatever. And that's what I did on this YouTube channel. I didn't talk about technology, speakers, or whatever. I made my own music because that's how I express myself and then I got into home theater because music and home theater kind of can correlate. And so I have certain technology in here, cast speakers, anthem, blah, 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 because I really care about how good my sound sounds because I'm a music major. That's what I did for several years was listen to different instruments and learn how to, you know, pick out what instrument I'm hearing or what is that note or, you know, perfect pitch, whatever. Not everybody's like that. Some people just want a sound bar and a solid 75-inch TV from Best Buy for $450, and that is good enough for them. And if it's good enough for them, then it's good enough for me. It, like I said earlier in the video, it's not my job to correct anybody. I, it's my job to help people, but it's not my job to correct anybody. And sometimes you can't just come in here and just correct people and say, oh, you need to get rid of this and move this here. Some people are in different walks of life where they don't have the money to get this, to make this do this. We talk about getting DSPs for subwoofers or having multiple subwoofers. Some people just don't have the money for it. They want it. They want it just like I want it for them. They just don't have the money, right? Going through life changes. Maybe you just lost your home in a storm or tornado. You're in a town home now. Can't really put your home theater back together because you don't have the space or you lost all of it. You just don't know what, what's going on in people's lives. I've sold some of my own home theater gear because I needed money. I, it was, I needed money to get other things or do things that are maybe more responsible than buying speakers. So I sold things so that I could buy something else. So you just don't know where people are in their life and it's a blessing to me to be a YouTuber because a lot of people trust me enough to put in the comment section, hey, I'm going through this, 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 here's all that I have, what can I get for this much money? Or I'm on a very tight budget, I just did this, going through a divorce, I want my home theater back but don't have the money for this, so what do you recommend around this price point? Things like that. Some people email me and say, hey, just watching your videos and your, you know, your charismatic energy is really fun to watch. I watch you more so because you're fun to watch than the home theater itself. So a lot of people are in different uh, parts of life and we can't just, you know, come in here and say, this is terrible. Change this, move this here, pack this up. Why did you buy this brand over this brand? Whatever. It's not our job to do that. And YouTube has taught me that. Now, I didn't do any of this before YouTube, but... I have almost 35,000 people subscribed to my channel and I have well over a million uh, unique views on my channel. I've talked to a lot of people. Um, so I get the blessing of learning a lot about other people and their lives and you guys call me on video chat and show me your homes or send me videos of your home theaters. You let me in your space and I've learned that there's a lot of people who have the same passion of, of me but at different levels because of where they are in life. And I think it's really cool at the end of the day, but you have to be careful um, to not offend anybody, especially when it comes to social media. There are quite a few things YouTube has taught me about home theater, just home theater in general, learning where things go, how learning about sound, how sound works, how we can change the sound of something. I've learned a lot from YouTube, a lot of it being from my commenters, my viewers, um, and I want to know what you've learned from YouTube on the other side of the camera. Instead of watching, you know, just me, you watch other people, you read forums, whatever. What have, what has YouTube taught you about home theater? I really want to know that in the comment section down below. Please leave me as long as a comment you like. I do read all my comments. I heart everybody's comments and I pretty much respond to everybody's comments. So leave me down below. What has YouTube taught you about home theater since you've been watching? And let us know that down below. Hit that like button and subscribe if you are not already. And we will see you in the next video. K-Pace guy out. Peace.